Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. In our first story, we'll tell you how one lawyer avoided speeding tickets for years. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. And our first story. How my father got out of so many speeding tickets, they had to change the law. My father has been a lawyer here in BC, Canada for more than 30 years. When he was starting out in his 30s, he was hustling hard to support a stay-at-home wife and me, his young son. As he was very much a type A personality with not much patience, he sped on the highways often, and he got speeding tickets often. However, he took every single one to court and had every single one overturned. The reason was quite simple. At the time, Canada was in the process of switching over from imperial miles per hour to metric kilometers per hour, and all of the road signs had to be replaced. Now, the BC legal code specified that a road sign was legally comprised of two signs on a pole. Apparently, at some point, someone in charge of replacing all the signs with the new metric ones decided that they could save a considerable amount of money by printing all the information on one sign. But this no longer complied with the specifics of the legal code, so he would go back to the exact sign that he was ticketed because of and take a picture of it, and then bring the picture to court along with a copy of the laws in question. His defense was very simple. He would allow the arresting officer to take the stand and give his testimony regarding the issue of the ticket, and then show the officer the picture he took and ask them to identify whether that was the sign that he had sped past. They always agreed, saying that it was in fact the very same sign. He thanked them and then dismissed them with no further questions. He would then bring the picture to the judge along with the bookmarked page of the BC Highway Act and present the judge with the exact wording of the law, followed by his factual argument that since there was only a single sign posted, it did not constitute a legal road sign as defined in the Highway Act. As I said before, every single ticket was dismissed and all my dad lost was half an hour of his time. This worked for almost a decade with him overturning literally thousands of dollars of speeding tickets until the law was changed. And our second story. Mark assaults himself to get his boss fired. All right, this was told to me by a friend. He's the pilot of the story. This happened on a towboat. A towboat holds about five to seven people. The captain is the highest, and his word is pretty much law on a vessel, then the relief captain, then pilot, then engineer slash tankerman, then deckhand. The captain, who we'll call Cap, was a colossal D. He constantly tormented the deck crew. He lost over 50 deckhands in one year. Deckhands would literally just leave the boat whenever the boat would dock for fuel or for barge transfers. The captain was given a stern talking to, but considering that captains are like gold, it would take an extreme amount to get them fired. Enter Mark. Mark was an innocent-faced 18-year-old kid. He was very eager to learn and tried to take the initiative to do as much as he could. He had a great attitude, and my friend could easily see him advancing soon. Cap, on the other hand, had a permanent stick shoved up his butt and hated Mark. He would constantly make slurs against Mark, frequently implying that he wouldn't even let Mark perform certain sexual favors, no matter how much Mark begged. Mark at first took it well. He just figured it was new guy hazing. But even the other more experienced deckhands thought this was extreme, not because of what was being said, but because of the malice behind it. Cap also gave Mark extremely ridiculous jobs, like telling him to go out with a toothbrush and scrub the barge. It's around 110 degrees in August, and he's having this kid on his hands and knees on a heater barge that has heaters that heat the sludge slash oil so it doesn't solidify inside the barge, so the barge is easily 300 degrees. My friend did what he could to help the guy because he didn't want him to quit, he was telling him that he only had to make it three more weeks, then he could request a transfer to another boat, and he'd make sure he got it. Mark had other plans. So, to make sure you guys understand what happened, watches are six hours long. Captain was on a front watch, so he worked 6 to 12 both times. The pilot worked back watch, which was 12 to 6. The wheelhouse is usually the highest point on the boat. This boat had four decks, wheelhouse on top, then the pilot's rooms on the third deck, and the second deck, which housed the crew, then the bottom deck, which was the galley, engine room, generator room, and rudder room. Stairs separate each of the decks. 
So Cap just relieved my pilot friend and he was headed downstairs to his room to get some stuff, then go eat breakfast. Mark was heading up to the wheelhouse, as the captain usually calls him up there first thing in the morning to give him his crap list. As my friend was coming out of his room, he heard Mark screaming along the lines of, No! Get your hands off me! Stop! Ow! Why are you doing this? Then the pilot hears a large thud. He ran to the staircase and saw Mark laying at the bottom in a crumpled heap and Cap up at the top screaming stuff at Mark. My friend thought the captain finally snapped and tried to kill a deckhand. He did insinuate that he would do it often enough, so the office is contacted and they had to get Mark off the boat and to the hospital. I believe he ended up having a couple of broken ribs, a broken wrist, and I believe a concussion. The local authorities are called and Cap is arrested after they took everyone's story. Mark claimed that Cap pushed him down the stairs. Cap lost his job, his license. I think he was put on parole. My friend said he never talked to him again and only heard about what happened through other towboaters. Mark, on the other hand, healed nicely and even continued towboating. Fast forward five to six years and Mark's now an experienced engineer when my friend is riding over to make some extra cash and is put on the same boat as Mark. Before my friend got off the boat, Mark confessed to him that Mark did it to himself because he couldn't take it anymore. My friend had a lot of self-conflicting issues with this story as to whether or not to tell the office the truth, but so far he still hasn't. It's been about 10 years since this happened. And our last story. Boss makes major changes to schedule and gets me fired. This happened way back in the 90s when I had a night job as a computer operator on a mainframe. Big computer that Windows 3.1 is more powerful, or so it seemed. Our company relocated to a neighboring state over a weekend, and I was scheduled to work Saturday and Sunday nights 12 hours each and have off Friday, but was told to call Friday at 6 p.m. for directions to the new place. While I was there, I didn't know how to get there from where I lived. Since I wasn't scheduled, I ran the errands that I would do over the rest of the weekend because of the schedule, and at 6 o'clock I called. Conversation went like this. Hello, Boss Weasel. I'm calling to get directions to the new building. Boss Weasel. Good. He gave me directions and said he'd see me in an hour. Me. What? I'm not scheduled and I hadn't been to sleep yet as I wasn't supposed to be there. Boss Weasel. Plans changed. Sorry, I forgot to call. This meant that I wasn't going to get any sleep for basically two days, and I told him that. He didn't care. I said I've got a crash for a couple and would be there when I could. I grabbed a two-hour nap and drove the hour there. Needless to say, I crashed out at 3 a.m. and was caught the next day by Boss Weasel. I did get everything done I was supposed to get done, but crap happens. Well, I got threatened with being fired, but wasn't. But I was written up for it, and everyone else that was involved told him he was wrong. He didn't care. So five or six months of BS happened, and he decided to demote me to distribution clerk. This meant I had to separate thousands of pages of reports and get them to the right person. Of course, I wasn't trained to do this, and mistakes happened. So here's where the fun begins. He called me into his office, left the door opened, and just yelled at me. He told me that I wasn't to separate or distribute the reports, just pull them off the printer and let someone that wasn't a F-up do it. I realized something then, and smiled to myself, and said for him to put that in writing. The idiot did. The letter with the company logo stated that under no circumstances was I to distribute the reports. I said okay, and happily went on my way. He was going on vacation that night, and I knew the crap storm that was going to happen since that night, a Thursday, and the last day of the month, was the night the paychecks were printed. Well, the difference with paychecks is they were run through a special machine that separated them. There were about 500 or so, and then they'd be placed in envelopes by the payroll department, they picked up first thing in the morning. So about 10 minutes before they were to arrive, I got my coffee in Danish and waited. Payroll clerk, to be referred to as PC, where are the checks? Me. Over there. I pointed to a two-foot pile of papers. PC. I need them separated. Me. Can't do it. PC. WTF not. Me. Boss Weasel ordered me not to. I showed her a copy of the letter as I took the original home. PC. We'll see about that. Me. Okay. PC got Boss Weasel's underling, who actually was a decent person. Underling. OP, what's going on? Me. Boss Weasel told me in no uncertain terms that under any conditions am I to separate or distribute any reports. So I'm not. Underling. He knew the reasons. I'll authorize it. 
me. I'm not letting you take the heat for it. Call him and get permission. Once that's done, it'll take five to ten minutes to do it. Underling. Okay. He reaches for the phone, tries to call him, and no response. He went hunting, and there were no phones. <laughs> I said sorry, won't do it, finished my coffee, put my coat on, and went home. Told him I'd see him Monday, as I don't work Friday. Handed him the copy of his letter and left. They did manage to separate the checks eventually, and everyone got paid. I had direct deposit, so I didn't care. Nothing they could do to me then as I followed my instructions to the letter, but I knew I was done there and didn't care. Boss Weasel got reamed for that and made it his goal to get me to quit, but I wanted unemployment, so that wasn't happening. I got fired a month later and was told my goodbyes were talked about for months. When I saw him by my now former workmates, I let him have it. Last thing I said to him was that his boss needed him under his desk now. Run along and bring tissues, you'll need them. About a month or so later, I wanted to say hello to the guys I worked with for 10 years, and who answers the phone? Boss Weasel. Except now he was demoted to what my position was and had to work third shift and weekends. He didn't last long. I found out later where he went to and realized a dear friend of mine worked there too. Got him fired. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.